up then. Yeah, he changed it up and went early, but Hunter Ray's right in the draft. Everybody popping out. Connor Daly takes a look on the inside. Ferrucci and Palo on the right-hand side of your screen as Dixon goes up the inside. Back Hello, IndyCar fans. Welcome to Formula Pun Racer. I'm your host, Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders. Today is September 25th, 2020. Before I get into my review of the doubleheader at Mid-Ohio this past weekend, I'd like to share with you the following news in IndyCar racing that has just come to mind. First off, AJ Foyt Racing has assigned Sebastian Bourdais to climb into the number 14 car, starting at the Harvest GP, the Indy Road Course Grand Prix, which is October 3rd, replacing Tony Kanaan and he is going to drive for the Supertechs full-time for the 2021 season. As for Dalton Kellett and Charlie Kimball, their futures with the team are in the air at this point. In other racing news, Oliver Askew of the Arrow Schmidt um, Peterson McLaren team has unfortunately been uncleared to drive for that next round because he has turned out to come out with a side effects of a concussion, courtesy of the fact that his big crash at Indianapolis with Connor Daly is what caused him to be this way. Now why didn't he report this firsthand? Well he didn't feel so bad at first and he actually kind of tried to hide the fact from everyone because afraid about being replaced or having his seat be lost and um, seeing if maybe it was a performance issue but then his family and friends advised him to go to the same program that Dale Earnhardt Jr. went to when he suffered a concussion a few years ago or like last year, if memory serves me, in a plane crash. So that's one thing. Hopefully Oliver Skew will bounce back. So then who's going to replace him, you ask, in the coming season, uh, coming rounds? Well, this is going to be a surprise, but for the first time since 1999, a driver who is not driving under the Penske banner, it's Helio Castroneves. What? Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? I mean, like, this is Helio Castroneves' first non-Penske ride since 1999, when he drove for Hogan Racing. In addition, you could say that, well, as Oliver takes the time to recover and um, go through the treatment to settle this concussion that he's been diagnosed with, I'm sorry for him, his fans, and family and friends that it's a headache for us all. You're right, Re Repulsa. Hopefully he rests well, does what he has to do to treat this concussion, and then getting back in the car will be the biggest aspirin for everyone. What I meant to say in my last uh, video about F1 is, Fernando Alonso may be going to Renault next year, but the team is changing its name from Renault to Alpine, and it's switching its paint job from black and yellow to red, white, and blue on behalf of the French tricolor flag. This t the team will still be based in Enstone, England. I know, quite, iron, quite ironic uh, for a company that's based in France and having a factory in England, but it has been. With that said, the Alpine team will also have a sports car program for the 24 Hours of Le Mans next year. Will Fernando Alonso be contracted to go to that as well, or will he stick in F1 only for the next two years? That's in the year. But it would make sense if he does join the Alpine sports racing program at Le Mans. Suffice to say, he didn't win Le Mans this year. As for Sergio Perez, his best bet right now is, in terms of getting an F1 ride, is, I may have said with Alfa Romeo, but now it's leaning towards more like Haas. But if that doesn't work, it's possible that with his connections to Zach Brown and McLaren, he might go to the McLaren IndyCar team to join alongside Patricio Ward, if possible. That'd be neat. Two Mexican teammates would be a sight to see, just like we have two Swedes on the same team in Ganassi Racing, and I'll get to that later. With that said, the more Mexicans, the merrier. But the biggest IndyCar news of all, as of this moment, is the fact that Zach Veach of Andretti Autosport has severed his ties with the team before the season's even over, so he's not going to be competing anymore for the season, especially in the GameBridge sponsors car, because... Uh, he wants the team to develop better because of the pandemic, and he feels like his performance is not up to par. <gasps> Who's replacing him, you ask? For those of you who don't know, it's Canada's James Hinchcliffe, and I'm sure you are just gonna love it. I love it! Yeah, I knew you would, Mr. Leslie Nielsen. Oh, Canada indeed! <laughs> 
Oh, it'll be great to see James Hinchcliffe back in the seat for Andretti Autosport. But will he go the full season in 2021 with him? I hope so. I especially hope he wins Indy too, eh? <laughs> yep, I may be a proud American boy like Ryan Hunter Race said when he won Indy in 2014, but hey, Canadians are cool. Especially because with John Candy being my all-time favorite comedian after the Three Stooges, and well, he's from Ca he was from Canada, but that's uh, beside the point. The point is that James Hinchcliffe is back in the seat for Andretti Autosport, and he will have the Gainbridge sponsorship with him. Good luck, James. I hope you win some races this year, as there's only three left. A double header at the road course in Indy and St. Petersburg in October. Well, actually, all three um, races are in the month of October. Now, to get on with the race at Mid-Ohio. The first race was, well, quite uneventful for the most part. No uh, drivers out for the, for the fact. One of the biggest action-filled moments was when the fact that Colton Herta was almost cut off coming into the pits by an exiting teammate Alexander Rossi. But for the winner, it was Will Power of Australia for Team Penske. This is his first um, mid-Ohio win ever. Of all races he hadn't been able to accomplish, he finally accomplished mid-Ohio. Congratulations, Will Power. <sighs> and it was a, another Penske 1-2 for that matter. Nashville native of... Tennessee, Joseph Newgarden second, Alexander Rossi finished third, and Graham Rahal, the homeboy favorite, finished fourth. Oh, and that's why I mentioned Nashville. Starting next summer, the Indy cars will take place, will start a new racing debut on the streets of Nashville. And you know what's going to make it interesting? They've got a lot of lines to cross, as well as a bridge to cross. Oh, yes, this temporary track will go across a, a bridge or two through the city of Nashville across a river. Isn't that interesting? Uh, well, don't be so wet about it. I'm sure um, they'll be taking the procedures to make sure that nobody becomes a wet blanket. But hey, to see these race cars race across a bridge at a fast speed, hey, I think we're all in for an exciting splash. <laughs> No doubt about it, the crowds will be cheering on Joseph Newgarden, being local boy and all. And it's quite clear that with um, Nashville being a new debut of racing, I'm sure Gary and Tony will be betting their houses that it's going to be a popular venue. <laughs> and as for Penske winning 1-2 at the first round of the doubleheader in mid-Ohio, it's a pie in the face for us anti-Penske fans once again. <laughs> with interesting shakeups going on with Helio Castroneves driving for anyone but Penske and the fact that Veach is out at Andretti, if you ask me if I could uh, make a tweak or two or had an opinion about changes for the future, I have one. Some of you are probably going to hate me for saying this, but I think Marco Andretti should just be out of Andretti Autosport and replaced either by Will Power, New Garden, or... Simon Pagino and see how well one of they one of those drivers do for Andretti Autosport instead. Boo! 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 All right, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. I just thought it would be interesting because we all know how Andretti just seems to not be up to par and like put one of the Penske drivers in one of the Andretti cars. It's bound to increase the team's chances greatly because. What can I say? I mean, I did have faith in Marco for a long time, but either his car's not doing well or he just is not great. I just... something's wrong with his performance and I just don't know what it is. I'm sorry, but if you don't have what the Penske boys do, what can I say? I want you to win, Marco, but how? If you just don't have the confidence like the other drivers do. But anyway, to get back to the second round of the Mid-Ohio Doubleheader, Colton Herta started on pole, but the first few corners, and it was quite a chain reaction crash that some people claim Colton Herta started by forcing Santino Ferrucci into the grass, and the following would ensue. As you can see here, Ferrucci lost control, tried to get back on the track, and slammed into Palou, who took out Rosenquist in the process. You can imagine how Dale Coyne would have been super upset if it weren't for the fact that 
Ferrucci managed to continue on while Palou could not by finishing dead last. Ferrucci finished 14th on, on the lead lap through all that. But by lap 22, Scott Dixon, the winningest driver in mid-Ohio, had this little interesting incident. Yeah, quite the ballerina of a driver he's made of himself. Amazingly though, he went on and finished 10th in the race. Where's Marcus? Marcus finished 15th in race 1 and then 5th in race 2. In conclusion, the results of the second round of the Mid-Ohio Doubleheader were as follows. Third place, Ryan hunter Ray. Second place, Alexander Rossi. And the winner, Colton Herta taking his third IndyCar career victory. Congratulations, Colton Herta. This is also Andretti Autosports' first um, podium sweeps in 15 years since the 2005 St. Pete GP. Congratulations, Andretti Autosport, for the clean sweep. The next round is October 3rd at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Harvest Grand Prix, where they will once again challenge on the road course with Bordy Racing for Foyt and Hinchcliffe back to Andretti Autosport, and with Helio Castroneves not driving for Penske but to McLaren Schmidt-Peterson, it's going to be a very interesting outcome. Tune in till then. But for the moment, October 3rd, you'll have to wait till, but this Sunday, the Russian GP at Sochi you can catch at 7 a.m. on ESPN2. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders.